Let me start with a story about why I'm here, why I'm with Syngenta, and why I'm involved in the Syngenta Foundation. And it's because of one person standing there, a farmer in Tanzania by the name of Jonathan. But let me take you back. I was working with DuPont, as you heard, for 26 years. I was the president of DuPont's Agriculture and Nutrition Division. I liked it very much, but I wanted to be a CEO. So I left to be the CEO of a water treatment company called Nauco, where we helped industrial companies significantly reduce their water consumption, which is a noble cause, environmentally friendly, sustainable, very nice thing to do. But I felt like something was missing. Something just didn't feel right. And then in October of 2015, I took a trip along with an NGO that I support financially called World Vision to Tanzania to see the work that they do in agriculture, helping lift up farmers there. And one of the farmers that I talked to was Jonathan. And we're standing in his rice field. And I asked him, What's, wh how has your life changed with the support that you've gotten from World Vision? Tears start coming to his eyes, and he explains that five years before, before World Vision had started to help him, his kids, he lived in a, a mud hut. His kids couldn't go to school. They grew rice. On a good year, they had plenty of rice for them, their, their family and, and the community, and they could sell a little bit. On a bad year, they didn't have enough to eat. And now, five years later, with having learned how to farm, having been able to get access to modern seeds and modern tools to fertilize and protect the plants, to set up an irrigation system, he was growing rice, plenty of rice, to sell, to feed his family, to feed the community, and to sell. He's now living in a brick house his kids are going to school, and he's just so happy, so happy. And to feel that is just amazing that an organization that you're connected to is having that kind of impact on people. And I was on a flight back, a KLM flight, and I'm just thinking that that's what's been missing, that personal connection, knowing that what you're doing is impacting people, individuals and their families. And there are hundreds of millions of smallholders like Jonathan around the world. So I get back to Chicago, and I'm talking about this and thinking about this. Totally out of the blue, one month later, I get a call from a search firm saying, asking if I'm interested in the Syngenta opportunity. And of course, I said, yes, I'm absolutely interested. I want to get back into agriculture. I knew the Syngenta company. I competed against them with DuPont. I knew about the foundation and what the foundation was doing. And I just feel so honored every day to be back in the agriculture industry where a company and our foundation are helping farmers all over the world to better feed the world with nutritious, safe products, but also to take care of the planet. And I'll talk about that. So great to be here. Thank you, Jonathan. And let me tell you some more about Syngenta and the foundation. First of all, there are two worlds of agriculture. There are hundreds of millions of smallholder farmers, many of them pre-commercial, like Jonathan was, trying to scratch out a, a living. And those are the ones that our foundation helps lift up as our foundation and with collaboration partners. And then there are smallholders that start to be commercial and able to sell products and buy more modern seeds and crop protection products to protect the plants and, and earn a better living. And that's when Syngenta Company starts to come in. And then we also serve, the, 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 the small farmer goes all the way to a, a quarter of a hectare and then they can grow to, 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 to get more larger farms. 
We also serve farms that are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of hectares in Russia, Brazil, North America. So we span a, a very wide range with the company. But the foundation addresses that 400 million smallholders that are trying to make a living and, and grow into commercial opportunities. So that's two worlds of agriculture. And now, when I left DuPont back in 2008, our goal as an agriculture business, and Syngenta's goal, was to increase the yields, bring new technology to increase the yields of farmers so that they could make more money and they could pay more for our technology. We would share in the benefits and we would grow our business. So I come back to the industry in 2016 and the world has changed and it's climate change. The level of CO2 is rising rapidly and some people are saying, well, is it really having an impact? It's having a significant impact in agriculture today. In 2019, this year, the huge 80% of the US agriculture belt, which is very large and a big player in global agriculture, had the worst flooding in the history of the United States ever, ever. You know, I've heard about five-year floods, 10-year floods. This is in the history of the United States. At the same time, a little bit north in Western Canada, there were droughts. Australia is having the worst drought ever right now, still. France had the highest temperature ever recorded this summer in France. These things aren't unusual now. They're going to happen more and more. So what do we need to do as Syngenta, as a foundation, and as an industry? There's two things that we need to do. One is we need to help farmers be able to adapt to climate change, to, to, to severe weather situations. So in the US this year, our agronomists were out helping farmers understand how they could plant, when they could plant, and how they could plant despite the flooding. So we have satellite imagery telling the farmers where it was dry enough to go in and plant their seed and get going. So how to deal with flooding. And then drought. How do we develop products and, and, and technologies and support and irrigation capabilities to enable farmers, smallholders and large ones, to deal with significant drought conditions? And how do we develop seeds that enable you to grow a plant, not only in drought, but in extreme temperatures that are occurring? So that's one of the challenges, how to deal with climate change, how to grow products despite climate change. The other one is how do we become, as an industry, agriculture and food, contributes 25% of greenhouse gas emissions. And as the population grows, that's increasing. How do we as an industry stop that increase and start decreasing our CO2 emissions as an industry? How do, how do we start making that decline so that we're part of the solution, not part of the problem? And I'll talk about things that we're doing for that. Make sense? So, one of the joys of my job is I get to travel around, all around the world and meet the people having an impact in these areas, both in Syngenta, the foundation, and collaboration partners and, and, and the farmers of the world. This picture is from a recent trip I took with Simon Winter, the head of our foundation, to India. In the upper left, I'm working with our Syngenta colleagues who are developing seed varieties for vegetables that can withstand higher temperatures in India because they are rising. On the right side, Simon and I are inaugurating a solar-powered driven irrigation pump system in a very poor community near Patna, India. And these farmers before were trying to grow rice now they have enough water to grow rice, but because it's consistent, they can grow rice when they need to grow rice, and then afterwards, they grow vegetables, higher value vegetables. So these farmers that couldn't make a living before are now making a living with rice, 
and a better living with vegetables. And at the bottom, we have um, a, 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 a session where we had the ag entrepreneur that the foundation and partners have trained in that area who opens a shop so that farmers can buy their seeds, buy their crop protection products, buy their fertilizer, and then come together and sell their products. Those farmers are coming to thank the people for helping lift them up and to hear more about what's coming next and how, 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 how we can help each other. So it's a wonderful experience to be able to do this. Now let me give you a little bit of more background on Syngenta and the foundation so I can talk about how, how we work together. Syngenta is a very global company, 14 billion in sales last year, serving 100 million commercial farmers around the world, 28,000 people serving customers in 90 countries, our people are in 90 countries, and we spend $1.3 billion a year ourselves on technology, new technology to advance agriculture. And we have collaboration partners that spend additional monies that we take to market. We have, as, as Sophie said, we have a seeds business, which is the most emotional decision a farmer makes. It's like choosing their kids what seed they grow. It, 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 it's, the, it's the plant potential. And then we sell crop protection products, pesticides to help protect those seeds, help protect the plant. And we have digital technology tools that help farmers know how, how to grow better, how to farm better. The foundation focuses on the other 450 million farmers, pre-commercial, has projects in 15 countries, primarily in Africa, some in Southeast Asia, a big presence in India. I showed you the picture from India. And they start small with projects to prove how to help farmers, and they focus on agri-entrepreneurs that can help teach farmers and show them how to farm. They focus on seeds, providing seed technology, and insurance products, micro-insurance products, so that the, the farmers can, 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 can survive if they're challenging periods for them. So how do we work together? Give you an example. Syngenta develops new technology. And one of the important technologies we've developed is called artesian corn. Corn is the number one crop in the world by far. And under drought conditions, which are more and more prevalent, this artesian corn performs much better than other corn varieties under drought conditions or high temperature conditions. The way we figured this out was using big data capabilities. We looked at all of our products all over the world, corn products, and which ones performed well under drought conditions. And there were two that performed out of thousands that performed well under drought conditions. So with modern biological tools, we could go in, look at the DNA, what was the difference in DNA between those products and all the others, and identify the trait, the native trait, the gene that, that creates drought tolerance. So we were able to put that into many, many other products. We created our artesian corn line. We've also, and which is doing extremely well, by the way, because more and more concerns about drought, more farmers buy drought-tolerant corn. We've also taken some of our corn technology and shared that with our foundation and their partners, and they've gotten other seed technology that they've combined with that for a lower cost corn called AAA corn. It's also drought tolerant. It doesn't yield quite as much as the artesian corn, the highest level, but it does enough to help smallholder farmers get going and, and earn a living. And so that's how we work together, and they create products that don't compete against, directly with the company, but we're providing them with technology that enables them to provide products to the farmers that they're serving. Another example of, of the technology that we're developing is we have a large vegetable business. And so we're very concerned about food waste. And so we've figured out what chemicals in a tomato cause the tomato to spoil, to, to go bad. And we've been able to breed that tomato to produce less of that chemical so that it lasts longer, weeks longer shelf life, and 
taste better because it doesn't have the chemical that, that doesn't taste good, <laughs> less of the chemical that doesn't taste good. So that's the kind of technology that we're using to reduce food waste and improve, have more people eating vegetables around the world. We're also very much focused on reducing the amount of pesticides used in the world. So we have great world-class chemists that continually think of ways of having the, the chemistry be safer, be lower use, be more efficacious. The same with the pharmaceutical industry. You know, plants get diseases. We only want to tar target that disease, and we want to keep it safe from farmers and from consumers. So you can see in the last 50 years, we've reduced the amount of pesticide used per hectare. And by the way, the yields have gone up, so it's even more reduction per unit of food output by 95%. And this obviously benefits the Syngenta customer that we're serving, but these technologies are also used by the smallholder farmer that the foundation is serving. And we'll keep doing this significantly because we've got more and more better chemistries and we've got digital tools that enable us to target, precision target, how these chemistries are used. We're also striving for lower, lower towards zero residues on foods. And we're doing this for Syngenta, but the technologies and the practices that we use, we also share openly with the foundation. An example of that is many grape growers who have to battle significant diseases on the grapes. We work with them to understand what the weather patterns are and how they can use the minimal amount of pesticides to, to deal with the disease, but also so, so deal with it as early as possible so that by the time it goes to the consumers, the residue is, is very, very minimal or zero in many cases. We're also developing products that more naturally combat diseases. And one product called Affligard is actually a fungus, a disease, a fungus, that doesn't produce toxins. So we put that on the corn product or the peanuts and it pushes out, it stops the bad fungus from coming that produces the toxins. So it's a more natural approach. And we're doing more and more research and bringing out products like that because that doesn't have any residues that have any impact on consumers. We also have very high on our list if we're going to stop climate change, if we're going to turn the CO2 emissions from increasing drastically to decreasing, we have to, as an industry, as a world, stop deforestation and start reforesting. So how are we doing that? In addition to increasing yields with farmers on existing land so you don't need more land, we're going to degraded pasture land. There's massive amounts of degraded pasture land in Brazil that we're targeting with the Nature Conservancy, a very well-known, responsible, highly capable NGO. And what we're doing is, is, is we're upgrading the soils there. We're taking care of the soils and we're developing seeds that will grow in those soil conditions so that farmers want to expand in Brazil. You don't have to expand by burning the Amazon. You expand by rejuvenating these soils and growing products in these degraded pasture lands. Our commitment is to be part of the solution to stopping deforestation. So let me just finish by saying that we work to increase yields, as I said, so that we can grow the food that upcoming 10 billion people in the world need and do that with less land and reforest, stop deforestation. We're focused on soil health and in doing that also on biodiversity and not, not only protecting biodiversity, but enhancing biodiversity by using less land and having more land protected. And we have a goal now that we're talking more and more about and we're measuring farms with digital tools to head towards carbon neutral farming. There's all, actually there's some farms today where we measure the carbon footprint 
where farmers using technology smartly the right way have negative carbon, so actually are, are, are pulling carbon into the soil and, and have a negative carbon footprint. And that's what we would love to see broadly around the world, be, go from being part of the problem to being part of the solution. And then lastly, one of the biggest challenges in agriculture is China. They have 20% of the world's population, 7% of the land, and they've not had access to the, the, the modern tools. So they've used old seed, old crop protection, old fertilizer, and, and polluted the soil and have all kinds of water problems and environmental problems. We're helping to transform agriculture in, in, in China to upgrade their environmental performance and their food quality performance. And then we're serving farmers all around the world. So our mission is to bring plant potential to life to feed the world, but do it in a way that takes care of our planet. And that's the Syngenta company, but Syngenta Foundation doing that for pre-commercial farmers. Thank you very much.